Welcome back, everybody. We are talking about systems and graphing systems. And here's the deal. When you see this word systems, it's a pretty simple word. It just means that we got two things. Instead of one thing, we got two. Let's get ready to go. Okay. Now, if we got two lines, imagine I'm going to look a little crazy up here. I got two rulers, right? Imagine I got these two rulers, which are invisible on the video, but whatever. And I'm going to be trying to just like, boom, let's figure it out. Let's make two lines. When I make these two lines like that, these two lines, they cross. They cross at one point. Even if I switch this up, these two lines, they still cross at one point. Even if I try to make them crazy. They still cross at one point. Is everybody cool with that? That when you have two lines, they, they probably cross at a point. Okay. So pretty much today, what you're supposed to learn, 99% of the time, when you have two lines, for the notes today, I'm going to be using the colors yellow and pink. So I got yellow right here. I got pink right here. When you got two different lines, 99% of the time, they cross once. Everybody see this point right here? Now, basically, the only new piece that you got to do today is look at where they cross and then tell me where do they cross. I'll be honest with you. Graphing my students in first period, second period, they're very good. You guys did the warm-up very good at graphing and that's a, that's a good sign that's really good we've been struggling a little bit you got to tell me where is this coordinate okay when i see this coordinate right here how do we get from the origin to the point of intersection how do we get from here to here some of us are going to be very good at it some of us are going to be maybe a little bit you know of a struggle remember the X goes first and the Y goes second. What do you got? So you always want to kind of begin in the origin and think about like how far do I have to move from the origin? Right, so I agree with you, right? We got to go two left, right? To get from here, one, two. And so that's why we put negative two. Now this is a skill that you did in middle school. You did it in part A. I'm literally just telling you what's the coordinate of the intersection. You have done quizzes, tests, culminating assessments, all about this stuff. So this is not this is not really new at all. How much do we have to go up to get to that coordinate? We gotta go up. One, two. We gotta go up two. And so what do we put as our y number? Two. We just put a two. Right? So it's that the reason that people kind of struggle with this is it's kinda like slope, right? Because you do have to rise and you do have to run, but it's not a fraction, right? The x comes first and then the y. It's just a coordinate. Okay? So if I was just going to practice this for a second, right, and we were going to try to get to this point right here, let's say there was another question and it looked like that, how do we get and how do we say the coordinate of this piece, okay? I'll make myself parentheses, comma, parentheses. How much do I have to go over to get underneath this? And I know it's hard for you to count. I have to go over. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know it's far away from you, so no stress. And then how much do I have to go up? One, two, three, right? That's old school, middle school, part A. You've done that maybe literally 100 times, at least 50 times. It's been a while, though, so we're getting back to it, okay? 99% of the time, if you got two lines, boom. They cross. And what you have to do today is tell me where they cross. Okay. Now, there is a little 1% of the time, right? Because 99 is not all of it. 
one percent of the time you get something like this we've seen this before you get two lines yellow and pink and what's up with yellow and pink they're parallel I love the vocab word it's written in all caps right here but I like that and how many times do they touch it, it literally says never touch so they have no points in common so how many solutions do we have for this we got no solutions right that's pretty easy I'm not gonna lie to you if I show you two lines and I say how many times do they touch no they don't touch right that I think literally a second grader could solve this problem I don't think that's that hard and then we got this last one and this one honestly is very rare but it is a possibility okay that's the normal one, right? exactly this looks just like a normal line here's what's going on we got our yellow line and we also have a pink line guess where it is right on top just like that very strange it kind of looks like a hot dog how it goes right on top right in the bun I like to think of it like bunk beds right so you have the one bed and then you got another bunk bed right on top again that's somewhat simple now here's the thing about this you have a solution every time they touch right so like this that's one solution if they're like this that's no solutions okay but the way that this is set up does the pink and yellow line touch right here yeah do they touch right here yeah do they touch right here right here right here so how many times do they touch Well, that sounds like a nightmare. I mean, I never saw him, but yes. <laughs> MJ, you should certainly handle it okay. firmly. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yo, what the fuck? Oh, hey, TJ. Hey, you can't be can't be waking up with the hood on screaming cuss first, man. Right? You doing all right? Hey. TJ, you all right, man? You, you want to stay down in the hall for a sec? All right, let's go.
Infinite solutions because these touch an infinite amount of times. We're back to math class. We're back. It's not lunch. What's up, Isaiah? How are we supposed to know if it's like a, just a regular uh, graph or what's going to go? Oh, wow. It's a great point, right? If you're just looking at a picture, Jamel, we got to stop talking, man. We're in the middle of the nose now. No, it's okay, Parker. I was most talking to Jamel. And now that includes you too. You got to stop talking. I'm not stupid. So, Misai, it can be very hard to tell. The bottom line is you're going to be looking at a, a line and it's going to say how many solutions are there to the system of this equation. And so you're going to be able to say, it's not asking me for the slope. It's not asking me, it's asking me about solutions to the system. So that makes it more obvious. Okay. Now scrolling down, we got two lines here. We got a nice yellow, a nice pink, and how many times do these touch? Nine. These have no solutions. They do not touch. Like I said, I think a second grader is going to get that question right every time. So I hope that we're going to get it right as high school, freshmen, sophomores, whatever we are. Okay? Now let's look at number, or I guess it's letter B, right? Letter B, we got two graphs, yellow, pink. How many intersections do we have? We got one solution this time. And whenever you have one solution, you have to tell me where is that solution. That's the thing for today. I like that. I like that. Nice job, Brandon. Negative 4, 3. We went left 4. We went up 3. Negative four, one, two, three, four, a up like one, three, two, right? one, two, three. So scenario, are you talking about up here? Yeah. Scenario A, intersecting lines, one solution. Okay. And we got the last one here. So again, Misaya made a great point. When I look at this line, it's literally just one line, which is very weird. That's two lines on top of each other. Okay. How many solutions do we have if we have a perfect stack? Infinite. Because these touch everywhere. Infinite solutions. That's pretty rare, but it does happen. Okay. Krista, thank you for sharing. Jimmy, you'll keep up. We've only literally written like seven words so far. Yeah. Come on. All right, flip it over to the back. Now, here's what's going to happen on the back. You can see we got four questions. That's it. We certainly got to put our phone away, Dev. I know you like to take a photo, but we got to put our phone away. Okay. KK, you got a question? Um, we're going to keep moving, but maybe your friend has it. Maybe I can show you in just a second. Let me get through this. For letter D here, okay? It's telling us two lines. And what we're going to have to do is graph two lines. And we're going to have to see whether they cross one time, no times, infinite times. And so let me just show you. There's always a kid who's got their work and they got dots and they look like this. And then they look like this. And they're like, Mr. Collier, how come it doesn't cross at a perfect spot? You got to draw straight lines. You gotta, you gotta be a little neat. This is obviously bad. This, this is useless, right? We, we can't be doing graphs like this. So, here's what I'm gonna do. Throw that paper away. We're gonna start 
neatly here. Okay, I throw it away. We don't need that. All right, look at the letter D here. We've got line one. And what I like to do is like, I like to write it like this. Line one, M equals, B equals, squiggly line. Line two, M equals, B equals. You need a pencil? You good? Okay. Once we got this, we're going to try to write our two lines. I'm going to work with line one, which is the top one first. Okay. Anybody got the M or the B for line one? Nice. And I'm going to put two over one, but I agree with you. Two and three, that's not too bad. And I'm just going to graph this line. And again, we're good at graphing. So like be confident. Start at three. I'm going to put start on my Y intercept of three. And then I'm going to do my M, which is up two. And I'm going to do my bottom, which is right one. So I'm going rise over run. Okay, hopefully you're following along with me. We're going to count up. One, two, one. Put a coordinate right here. One, two, one. Put a coordinate right here. Okay. I got my three lines on there. I got a ruler. I'm going to make a nice straight line. I'm going to line them up, right? So I'm going to see, you know, dot, dot, dot. Line them up with the ruler. And then I'm going to do a nice little trace. And Important, make sure you do a line that goes a long way because you got to make sure you're ready for an intersection. Now, like I was saying, is there anybody who wants a ruler that didn't get one earlier? Anybody want a ruler? Okay, sure. No problem. Just in case. It's always good to have a backup ruler. Anybody else want a ruler? Okay. Keep it going. We got line two, and line two, shh, a lot of talking during notes. Come on, we got to do a little better. Behavior needs to improve. We got M and B. The M is negative one over one, and the B is three. Again, we should be good at graphing. You just kind of got to ignore this graph and just graph a second graph right on top. I'm going to start with B equals 3, okay? So I'm going to start right here, same exact place I started last time. Mm, that is going to look like a nice intersection. Then I'm going to go up one, left one. So I'm going to go up one, left one, dot right here, up one, left one, dot right here. Will we ever be doing third intersection, like three intersections? Hmm. Truthfully, no. Not really. Okay. Not, in, not in Algebra 1 and really pretty much never. Good thinking, though. Algebra 2 is only one piece. Good question. Really good question, but it's only one piece. All right, so we're going to draw a nice line here. And we've done it. This is probably the first time you ever drew two graphs on one graph, which is kind of weird, but how many touches we got? No touches, one touch, infinite touch. I'll be honest with you. Like I said on the notes, 99% of the time, it's going to be one touch, right? 99% of the time. So we got one touch. Like I said, a lot of people have been getting this part wrong, though. How much do we need to move from the origin side to side? Do I need to go to the right at all? Do I need to go to the left at all? The truth is, no. I need to put a zero here for my x. Because in order to get from the origin to my intersection, I don't have to go left or right at all. All I got to do is get right here. How much do I have to go up to get from the origin to my intersection? I got to go up. One, two, three. I got to go up three. And so I need to have this. 
super, super important. That is where my two lines intersect. At the same time, this isn't crazy hard. We literally just graph two lines, and when we graph two lines, we look at where they touch. Okay, so let's keep it going. I want to be done with these three by lunch, and we definitely are going to have time to do that. These questions aren't really as long as they feel like. So let's do E. I'm going to say that we got line 1, M equals B equals, give it a little break, line 2, M equals B equals. And let's talk about line 1 first. The M is negative 4. We did that on the warm-up, the same one, so I don't mind giving you that. And the B number is negative 6. Heard somebody say that. Nice job. And so let's graph line number 1. Doesn't take that long even. I'm going to go down 6. That's my first point. And then I'm going to do rise over run. I'm going to rise up 4. And I'm going to be going left 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. All right. Use your ruler. Draw a nice straight line. We're almost done. We're making some great progress. we got five more lines to grab. All right, man. Let's get this. Yeah, nice Come on. Okay, we got a nice line here. Nice straight line goes all the way across. Let's get line number two. The M is 2 over 1. What would the B number be if we don't see it? A 0. Nice job. So let's graph this. Let's try to cut the conversation down a little bit. We're, we're on notes. We don't have many questions left. I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to go up two, one, two. I'm going to go to the side, one, one. And I'm going to the right because it's a positive slope. One, two, one. Now that I got this, I'm going to put a nice line. Now, interesting, when I did this question, I got my three from this line, line number one, and I got my three from this line, line number two, and I don't have any repeated dots. But do you see how we're going to have an intersection? Yeah, it's the around here. Yeah, right. Negative three, six. Hmm, not quite. So look how, look how I got my graph. I'm going to have to go ahead, and when I want to line this up, I kind of want to try to get all three of my dots from line two, and I want to see if it's also going to get a dot from line one. So you see, when I line this up, I'm getting one, two, three. These are my line two dots, and this one is my dot from line one. So now, this perfect lineup shows me that our intersection is right here. We've got to get our coordinate on there. And again, this is not new information, how to find a coordinate. You did it in middle school. You did it in part A. The coordinate of our intersection, do we have to go left or right? Yeah, we got to go left. How much do we have to go left? One. So I'm putting negative one. Okay. How much do we have to go down to get to our coordinate? One, two. Negative two. So our coordinate of intersection is negative one, negative two. All right, we got two more questions. We've made good progress. These aren't taking us very long. Let's wrap up these last two questions here. Letter F. Okay. 
I'm going to get you set up. Line 1, M equals, B equals, little squiggly line. Line 2, M equals, B equals. And I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to give you guys maybe just, how about one minute? Just see if you can try to find your M and B. And if you got the M and the B, see if you can get plot that B value down. And if you can plot that B value down, see if you can work with the slope a little bit. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to give you a second to try this one out. Obviously, today we got graded classwork that looks like this. So I'm trying to make it so that you got a chance to try yourself. OK, it's not going to be a super long time. If you don't know what's going on, let's ask a question. All right, I'm going back to talking. Let's end the conversations. Nice job. I was really impressed. I'll be honest. I saw a lot of people who had all the rest of them figured out already. Nice and graphed. I'm really impressed in this class. Honestly, very neat. That, that's great. This is a great stuff to be neat on. So line one, I got negative three over five. I got the B is one. And so plotting this doesn't take a super long time. I'm going to start at one. And then I'm going to go up and left. So I'm going one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to run out of room. One, two, three, one, two, three. Eh, eh. So I'm going to go instead the opposite direction. Down three. One, two, three. Right five. One, two, three, four, five. Going to draw a nice straight line. Make sure it looks straight. Take it all the way across. All right, now I'm going to move on to line two. Line two, I don't see the M, so it's going to be one over one. And I see that the B is pretty easy, negative seven. So I'm going to start at negative seven. And I'm going to go one, 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 one. I'm going to the right because it's positive. And this looks not too bad, right? Like when I'm looking at this right here, I don't see any already double use, but I can kind of like, in your mind, can you envision the line and see where it crosses, right? Some students, they like to kind of keep the pattern going, right? So they'll go one, one, dot, one, one, dot, one, one, dot. And now they did extra dots, right? They did extra, but it makes it really obvious for them. It makes them feel really confident. So if you want to do that, do it, right? Mr. Collier's class. It's not going to be a requirement, but some students do like to do that. So it would be like, like, be like one, one basically? Yeah, so if you, if you look at line two, the M is invisible. So the M, we put a one in front of the X, yeah. and then we always just put a divide by one on any of the number that we need to. So we got one, one. Okay, Up so one, takes like right one. One, one, like, one, take one little one box. To one to reach the like exactly so now we're at the intersection right and what we need to do to finish up is you got to tell me where do these actually intersect okay 
Does anybody have the intersection figured out for these two lines? I got five for sure. I'm starting at the origin. I'm going over one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. But I do think it's negative two. Five, negative two. Nice job. Really good. Like I said, I'm pretty impressed this class. You guys have been doing a pretty solid job. Let's keep that going. We got literally one question left, and the good news is it's a pretty easy question. So for this last question right here, we got two graphs. We got line one. We got line two. But the thing about line one is it's a very short question with x only. This is a weird graph, right? And line two, same thing. Very short equation with x only. This is a weird graph. So if I know it's going to be one of these one letter only, am I going to go with a horizontal or a vertical line for x equals? This is a vertical. Mark, I got to take the headphone out, man. It's the rule for everybody in the screen all the time. So we're going with vertical for both of these lines. You might be able to think in your head already, wait a second, isn't that going to... For line one, six. Am I putting the six at spot A or at spot B? B, nice call. This is an X-only graph which means x-axis, right? So I'm going to put a nice vertical line here. That's not very difficult. And then I'm going to look for the line 2, negative 4. And am I going to put it at C or D? Again, kind of obvious. We're going at D. I mean, we're going at C. And we're going at C because it's an X only graph, so we need to be on the X axis. We normally start on the Y axis, but we don't start there for these vertical graphs. So I'm gonna draw a nice vertical line. I'm gonna draw a nice vertical line. Oh, so we could do no solution here. And now we're looking at these two lines right here, and these two lines, no these are looking like no solution. So, in this case scenario, we don't have to put parentheses, comma, parentheses, because there's literally no solution. There's literally no intersection. All right, I'm going to go over this in review for just a second here. On the front, I threw away my copy. On the front, there's three possible possibilities, which is a silly way to say it. Almost every time, it's one intersection. And you got to tell me the coordinate. Very rare. We got this little hot dog situation. We got this little bunk bed situation. And in scenario C, not quite as rare. We got parallel lines. That's a no solution. Remember, any time that you have one solution, you always have to tell me where it is. All right, that is graphing inequal or systems of equations.